All right, the big update that we are getting for you is uh, that uh, the Enforcement Directorate has sealed a part of the National Herald Office instructing uh, that uh, the premises uh, should not be opened without the prior permission from the agency. An additional force has been deployed outside 10 Janpat, uh, which is uh, Sonia Gandhi's residence. So this is the big update that uh, we are uh, getting for you just uh, yesterday. Uh, raids uh, were uh, carried out at the Herald House and today it has been sealed. All right, we're getting some reactions on this story. Take a look. Permission <laughs> All right, there you heard uh, senior Congress uh, leader Salman Khurshid there uh, saying uh, that uh, since there was no money involved, so what is the question of laundering it? Uh, basically discrediting all the charges and allegations made by the Enforcement Directorate. Uh, this is the latest and he said that uh, whenever uh, the ED comes up here to welcome him, uh, we're also getting uh, the reaction of Digvijay Singh. Let's take a look. भारत जोड़ने के लिए तो आए हैं भारत जोड़ने में तो लगे हैं वो लोग भारत तोड़ने में लगे हैं हम भारत जोड़ने में देखिए यहां पे सलमान ने खुशी दी थी इनका तो आज राजी सर All right, so that uh, was the reaction coming in. So the big update is that Enforcement Directorate has sealed a part of uh, the Herald House. Uh, remember, yesterday, ED conducted searches uh, at the National Herald Office. Uh, uh, remember, earlier, uh, in connection with this case, uh, both Sonia Gandhi and Rahul Gandhi were questioned by the investigative agency. And uh, today, another development, uh, a part of uh, the office has been sealed. And the ED notice says that uh, no entry can be done without the authorities' permission. For more on this, I'm joined by Bhavtosh on the broadcast. Bhavtosh, what is the latest that you can share with us as far as ED sealing the Herald House? Well, uh, the viral uh, photograph of uh, their, uh, that order is already uh, public and uh, this is uh, the assistant director, uh, director of uh, the enforcement directorate has said 
that the young India portion of uh, National Herald uh, cannot be uh, opened unless further order. Remember, yesterday morning, the Enforcement Directorate team had gone to the office of uh, National Herald and uh, Young India, uh, a company uh, that was set up in November 10, had uh, taken over the assets of Associate General Private Limited and then subsequently uh, National Herald uh, from, a, a, from a newspaper, a print newspaper, became an online uh, edition. Now, the, the Enforcement Directorate uh, relied on an order that was passed in uh, 2010, uh, 2015 and then started probing a case under money laundering and uh, it registered a case of money laundering. It also relied on an income tax uh, appellate tribunal order of March uh, of this March. It had already questioned um, Pawan Bansal, Malkarjun Kharge and then uh, the politics uh, started course, my apologies when... uh, to interrupt. Before interrupting, we are getting some reactions coming in. Let's take a look. <laughs> और डरा कर सारे कांग्रेस पार्टी के कार्यकर्ताओं को डिमोरलाइज करें और वो एक पार्टी की सत्ता चलाना चाहते हैं इससे पहले भी आप सुना होगा कि उनके बीजेपी पार्टी के नेता ने ये कहा इस देश में एक ही पार्टी रहने वाली है तो उसके तरफ वो जा रहे हैं और लोकतंत्र वो नहीं चाहते और संविधान भी नहीं चाहते वो अपना रोल चलाना चाहते हैं लेकिन इनका बार बार कहना है कि ईडी जो कार्रवाई कर रही है वो उनके पास साक्ष है और इसीलिए वो इस तरह की कार्रवाई कर रहे हैं। अरे कर, उसको रूल्स है रेगुलेशंस है ऐसा नहीं कि उनके घर पे मारो इनके घर पे मारो फिर नेशनल हेराल्ड पे फिर एक बार बुलाओ ये कितनी जल्दी से वो काम कर रहे हैं इससे ही अंदाजा लगता ना छह दिन पहले बुलाए इमीडिएटली नेशनल हेराल्ड पे डाले कल पर जो नेशनल हेराल्ड में हुआ आज उनके मकान पे गए हैं इसका मतलब क्या है राहुल गांधी जी भी यहाँ नहीं है उन्होंने तो पब्लिक मीटिंग में गए हैं तो ये लोगों को एक डर पैदा करने के लिए और ऐसा तुम लोगों को डराते गए तो लोग डरेंगे नहीं और एक रिवोल्ट हो जाएंगे हमारे साथ All right, uh, that was uh, Malikarjun Kharge reacting on this development. Uh, Bhavtosh, my apologies. Yes, you were making a point. Please go ahead. Well, uh, the searches that happened uh, uh, yesterday morning went on till uh, we hours. Uh, uh, around uh, 16 hours of searches went, and uh, after which a notice was per, uh, put out on the Young Indian Office uh, of uh, National Herald uh, Publications, and it said that uh, that portion of the uh, of the office cannot be opened until until further uh, notice. Now, what actually it means is that the office bearers of uh, principal uh, official of uh, Young Indian was not present when the raids and searches actually happened. Now, this is uh, trouble for Young Indian because uh, the directors of Young Indian include Sonia Gandhi, Rahul Gandhi. Uh, they have 76% share of Young Indian. Now, Young Indian is a company that had taken over the assets of uh, Associate General Private Limited and uh, the entire loan of 91 crore rupees that was given uh, by the Congress party to revive the newspaper was written off uh, for just 51 lakh rupees or 50 lakh uh, 80,000 rupees. Now, that's the basic charge against Young Indian, whereas Congress party said that Young Indian, though formed as a company under Section 25 of Companies Act, was, a, was actually a trust, a charitable trust, and no one, uh, the trustees uh, have not taken any dividend of profit. Whereas uh, the enforcement directorate said that uh, by usurping uh, all the assets of uh, Associate General Private Limited, they have actually uh, hoarded around 2100 crores of uh, prime assets across the country. Uh, both Rahul as well as Sonia Gandhi have recorded this statement and it's being said that uh, the enforcement directorate will very soon file a prosecution complaint in this case and it could attach assets uh, spread across uh, five or six cities. Now, that's a very uh, serious development that will happen in days to come, apart from the politics that is being played out. Uh, what what has actually happened in 2015 was that Rahul and uh, Sonia, when they were produced, uh, when they had come uh, before a Delhi court, before a Patiala House court, they were given additional uh, conditional bail only because they were SPG protective. Under the SPG Act, uh, they were uh, uh, protective of SPG. And uh, if and when this uh, charge sheet will be filed, a prosecution complaint will be filed, it will be filed under sections of uh, PMLA under Section 3 and 4 of PMLA, which is a very serious offense. And many are saying that uh, it could be possible that the court can cancel the bail and uh, can uh, carry out its own investigation. Now, that could be the reason why uh, many in Congress are fe uh, feeling that this could uh, this move could be an attempt by the center to target uh, the top leadership of Congress. 
All right. Uh, thank you, Bhavtosh, for getting us those updates. And we also understand uh, that uh, additional force has been deployed at uh, 10 Janpath, uh, which is uh, Sonia Gandhi's residence. Uh, so this is the latest that we are getting for you on this big story. All right, and moving on, the Supreme Court has sought suggestions on whether an expert body should look into the issue of freebies by political parties before elections. The top court asked why opposition was not concerned about this issue and said that experts from Niti Aayog, Finance Commission, RBI and opposition parties may need to go through the pros and cons of freebies. Center, meanwhile, said that it agreed that it was a serious issue and that election commission should go through as freebies have an adverse impact on the economy. The top court has given seven days time for suggestions from these stakeholders. Now, Aam Admi Party Chief Arvind K. Jival tweeted and said that free facilities to public will not cause economic crisis, but giving free benefits worth crores to quote-unquote friends may lead to a crisis. All right, for more on this, I'm joined by Nilashish on the broadcast. And Nilashish, can you take us through the kind of arguments made by the center in Supreme Court and what did the bench say? Uh, because I remember the, 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 the examples that were cited by the petitioner in this case include almost all parties but the BJP. It includes uh, Aam Aadmi Party, Akali Dal, Congress. So the kind of examples that have been given, whether it is our promising 1,000 rupee a month to every woman in Punjab, whether Congress promising smartphones to girls in Uttar Pradesh. Well, yes, absolutely. Uh, this is a petition filed by an uh, advocate who is also a BJP leader, Ashwini Kumar Upadhyay, where he had said that uh, there are a number of unreasonable promises made in terms of freebies to people before, uh, uh, before elections. Now, the Supreme Court took very serious note of this. In fact, this matter has been coming up in court uh, a couple of times. Uh, today, when it came up, uh, the, the Chief Justice of India, Justice N.V. Ramanna, was also of the opinion, and he agreed with the center that it is a very serious issue. He also went on to say that I don't want to name any party, but all parties seem to be engaging in such activities. And if something of this uh, nature is not uh, really addressed, there's no debate that takes place, then it will be a, an issue as far as the economy is concerned. Uh, Solicitor General Tushar Mehta, who appeared for the centre, said that uh, this kind of uh, promising of freebies can lead to a major economic disaster in India. So what the bench really wanted today, as far as the Supreme Court bench is concerned, while hearing this matter, was to seek suggestions, a report, a time-bound report, uh, that they want uh, in terms of uh, how exactly this uh, problem could be tackled. Now, uh, uh, in fact, uh, senior advocate Kapil Sibbal, who was, uh, uh, who was also present in the court at that time, uh, the Chief Justice uh, spoke to him as well. Being a parliamentarian, he sought suggestions from him as well. So now at this point, what the Supreme Court has said is that the Niti Aayog, the RBI, the Finance Commission, opposition parties, the government included, all of them must uh, sit down and really give suggestions as to how a body could, could be constituted which will look into this matter and then submit a report. So as far as these suggestions are concerned, seven days' time has been given to all these people to, in fact, uh, jot down certain suggestions as far as constituting an expert body is concerned. So the expert body thereafter uh, is what uh, we uh, assume will be uh, set up uh, by, the, by the Chief Justice of India in this case after these suggestions come in from various stakeholders, including the opposition, including Niti Aayog, Finance Commission, and so on. All these bodies must uh, give their suggestions within seven days' uh, time, and thereafter the court will take up this matter again uh, next week. And then we will see how this matter goes on uh, from there. But definitely serious concerns with regard to promise of freebies uh, before elections raised in the Supreme Court and by the Supreme Court. All right. Uh, thank you, Nira Shish, uh, for these updates. I'm also joined by a special guest on the broadcast, uh, Dr. Akash Deep Muni, who's uh, an educationist and a political analyst. Uh, Dr. Akash Deep Muni, thank you so much for making time and speaking to Mirror now. Uh, what the center said in court, what the Supreme Court observed versus what the petitioner said. What do you think about this freebie politics? Do you think what the center has said that uh, these freebies ahead of elections will spell economic disaster for the country? Uh, 
see archana first and foremost i'm so happy that a bjp member uh, ashwini kumar uh, has gone to the supreme court against uh, uh, the freebies of uh, bjp given in uttar pradesh like uh, free electricity for 5 years to farmers and uh, free lpg cylinders and also in goa so this is very a welcome move that a bjp minister my uh, leader is going against uh, the same freebie culture of the bharatiya janata party second point is that it is actually it is not freebie it is a way to fight uh, inflation by the common middle class let me explain my point archana you know since last two years there has been no increase in the tax slab mm. but there has been 7% inflation so while the inflation increases at the 7% and the tax slab remains the same more and more less paid persons come in the tax bracket which increases the magnitude of tax collected in the exchequer which you can account see the accounts also in the last two years so what happens is that how these tax collected can be returned back to the common man in terms of social schemes and social upliftment how can be done it is not done actually for example let me explain you know in a vaccination called pcv which prevents pneumonia among children is not given in many states in this country to the church babies it is not given by the government and you have to go out pay 4000 rupees and buy it it means that the tax collected by the common man is not returned back in terms of social upliftment schemes and when it is done because of election pressure by some of the political parties like aam aadmi party who is now providing free electricity till 300 units free education to free good education so so there is a problem this is not free be this is returning back to the society what the exchequer collects and this is uh, this is uh, a way to fight inflation i don't think this is actually free be culture all right but i think the op- while i agree with you that you know in fact i was going through the uh, details of the petition and the parties that have been mentioned are only aam aadmi party akali dal and the congress there is no mention of the bjp of course because the please buy a bjp member but my point is that the operative part is that these freebies or whatever you want to call them before elections does raise some eyebrows uh, because if the intent is uh, to establish a welfare state or if the intent is to take care of people that can happen when you're in charge when it's your government but ahead of elections uh, do you think uh, these these elements don't uh, raise any suspicion see uh, i think that there is a common minimum program and they, these welfare schemes should be enumerated in the common minimum program very clearly that what are the steps they are ta- going to take in the uh, like for example uh, there is one suggestion that there should be one cap above which there should not be any more uh, you know uh, spent on the freebies culture definitely if there should be a cap there should be certain areas for example education health care there should be spending definitely hmm. and the government should clearly say before elections that how much they are going to spend and how they are going to re- bring it back for example i'll just give you last example you know our it minister uh you know uh, have given second uh, bouquet of uh, benefit to bsnl which is running in losses so if we can make these companies profitable and then take that profit money and in return that profit money to the common man through welfare schemes that is very important and uh, the number of welfare schemes that should be coming uh, which is not coming by the government of course Absolutely. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Muni, for making time and uh, sharing your insights on this story. We'll have to wait and watch because seven days is what the Supreme Court has given these stakeholders to come up with their suggestions as far as the freebie politics is concerned. We'll have to wait and watch. We can use any terminology, but uh, at the end of the day, it's the people who matter and uh, the kind of steps that are taken. And uh, ahead of elections, of course, the intent is. Uh, a uh, very suspicious uh, but this is the big update that we are tracking on mirror now
Moving on, as India's monkeypox infections are rising, Health Ministry has released a list of do's and don'ts on this disease. Centre says that there is a need to maintain distance from infected people and has also urged people not to discriminate against the infected. Uh, there were several reports uh, where uh, stigmatisation of monkeypox patients was taking place. Uh, for more on this, I am joined by Ishika on the broadcast. Ishika, what are the do's and don'ts that the centre has uh, declared as far as monkeypox is concerned. Yes, so yesterday after the third case of monkeypox was confirmed in the capital, the cases in India has risen to eight. Now the Union Health Ministry has released certain guidelines for the public to follow. Now first and foremost is to avoid any kind of physical contact with the ones who are infected. To not share any kinds of clothes or, you know, towels or handkerchief with the people who are infected now for the infected people they have said that you know they need to track the contact uh, they need to track as to how many people are coming in contact with them for at least a month now the uh, uh, the government has also said that not to discriminate against uh, you know those who have been infected and those who are suspected and to be aware about the rumors surrounding monkey pox now the uh, now the central government has also as we heard yesterday the health minister informed the house the steps that it has been taking for the people uh, saying that you know a central task force has been formed to not just uh, monitor the developments of the uh, vaccine but also assist the state government in uh, fighting monkeypox now the delhi government also has been saying and assuring the people that there is no need to panic and they are taking steps and we saw that you know 20 isolation rooms have been made at lnjp now the experts as well as the government be it the state government or the central government are saying are telling people that you know covid uh, covid protocols that we were following be it the mask be it the social di distancing be it you know uh, hand hygiene all of them should be followed in monkey pox thus the government again and again it's trying to say to the people that there is definitely no need to panic but they need to be responsible to prevent the spread of monkey pox over to you all right, uh, thank you, Ishika, for these updates. Moving on, 17 opposition parties have signed a joint statement expressing deep apprehensions on the implications of the recent top court judgment upholding the provisions of Prevention of Money Laundering Act. The joint opposition has called for the review of the court order. The opposition has said that they are disappointed with the top judicial body and that the order strengthened the hands of the government. The Supreme Court's order earlier had upheld the powers of the Enforcement Directorate to hold inquiries, arrest people and attach property. The opposition has long accused the government of misusing the central agency by only investigating cases against non-BJP leaders. You know, I myself have argued in that case and I have uh, tried to argue that some of the provisions are draconian and some are contradictory even. Uh, and the court has upheld some of those, but most of them have been rejected. Uh, you know, all, all the senior counsel there, I think, were trying to uh, make the act more liberal, more humane. But, uh, you know, the court preferred the view of the government that uh, uh, this drastic rise in uh, bank frauds, non-banking you know, non financial institutions requires drastic measures. And they also put it on the ground of, you know, treaty obligations, or obligations to FATF and uh, you know, international institutions that were against money laundering. So one has to, you know, sadly sometimes accept verdicts that go against you and which uh, don't resonate with your own conscience. Right. But that's the case. But, anyway. you know, in this case, it, it appears to be a, a clear division along political lines. Because it is opposition parties who are signing the statement. Do you think that, uh, you know, in this manner, judgments politicized in this fashion, is it correct or do you think it's, a, it's something that is uh, to be expected? Well, I, you know, I, I don't think it's for parliamentarians to say this because ultimately we have a separation of powers doctrine in this country. The judiciary interprets the law. They have upheld the provisions under the PMLA, uh, which was enacted by uh, the originally in 2002. And many of the amendments that were challenged were actually, uh, you know, the the outcome of Mr. Chidambaram's government. He was the finance minister at that time. So, you know, what can one do? I mean, these provisions have a historical legacy. 
and uh, people who were yesterday sitting in power and were responsible for the enactment of the draconian plan are today complaining against them because uh, you know uh, it's come back to bite them so uh, unfortunately to some of the provisions are uh, we have to respect the verdict of the supreme court accept it and lawyers will still do their best in spite of the punishment